Okay, so what I'm going to do in this video is show you how to work with Live Trace. Now, definitely the pen tool in Illustrator gives you the most control over what you're doing, um, but Live Trace is really a really cool way to take a JPEG, um, a GIF, a PNG file, and to turn it into a vector drawing. So here it goes. What I'm going to do in this project, this is an Andy Warhol inspired project. I'm going to take uh, an image, I'm going to put it in to my composition three different times and I'm going to apply live trace and change the effects. So here goes. First thing I want to do is just come in file new. Now I'm just going to keep this, maybe I'll just go, uh, let's see, I'll go my width 10 and 8 and I'm going to change this based on uh, what my this, this images of shoes based on how I place this and it's really easy to edit the artboard. So there we go. I come in 8 by 10. Here's my board. Now, the story is, is that this is my artboard. Okay, and this is the area around my artboard. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come on in here. I'm going to come File, Place. I'm going to come to my desktop and I have this image of shoes. Now you want to make sure that your image isn't too big of a file because what will happen is it will just take forever to go through live trace so when you check your image <clears throat> you might just want to check the image side so if I get the info on this this image is 1.1 megabytes and that's okay could you actually even be a, even a little bit smaller okay so here we go so here's my image I just placed it in and now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to come up onto this panel right here I'm going to hit live trace now I'm going to show you where else you can get live trace you can come to object live trace and you can actually set your tracing option so I can say I want it to be black and white I'm going to make mine color six and see what happens so I'm going to hit trace and there we have it this is what this shoe looks like with six colors now maybe I want to up the colors a little bit so I'll go to nine Okay, and maybe I want to up them a little bit more, 12. Okay, good. Now I have a little bit of that red in there. So excellent. So I just did my first live trace. I could take this. I could move this over. Now, let's say I want to alter my colors. The next step to do after you do the live trace is you have to hit expand. Okay, now what I see, all of these little anger points and paths, these are all the anger points and paths that Illustrator created when it live traced this file. So if I click off, I can zoom in. Oh, I want to zoom it on in. And I want to change around some of these colors. So let's say that I decided, I said, you know, I want to um, select and change some of these colors. I want to change the background color. What I could do is I could take my white arrow and select. Now I could delete that, get rid of the black. I could come on in here, you know, delete these this different area, this area back in here actually very easily. Oops, didn't want to take all of that. So by just making certain selections, let's see if I select this, I could delete. I'm just selecting it, I'm drawing a box around it, selecting it. Now, again, you don't have complete control over how um, this whole thing is laid out. So what I could do is come, just selecting this. Oh, now I can see that actually took this whole side, which I don't want. So I'm just going to come in and take this area right here, and probably I can get these two guys right there. Now, what I could do is I could take and put a different color behind it. So I'm going to grab my shape tool. I'm going to sample this nice red shoe. Come back to my shape and draw a different colored shape behind this. I come to put this behind it, object arrange, send to back. Okay, here's my first variation of these shoes. Now, what I want to do for this project though is I want to take this. This is a, we can make this into a triptych. I think the term triptych actually means three. Diptych might be four. So we're going to take a couple different images and place them next to one another. Now, if I wanted to make this whole thing a little bit smaller, what I would do is I could take my black arrow and actually select the whole thing. Okay, hold down, shift, come to the side, and select it that way. 
and there we have it there's our first image now really the best thing to do because I put a shape behind this would be to group to group this okay so let's do that and let's do another one we come into object group and there we have it we have this one group now let's place another one and do the same but alter some of the colors so I come to file place again I'm going to find my shoes I'm gonna hit place and there are my shoes now what I maybe what I want to do while this is right here is hold down shift come to the side and make this line up with this image right there okay there we have it now I want to apply live trace to this image right here so I could come on in now I could change this too I could say hmm, let's do color 16 this time and see what happens okay good now in order to um, change the colors I need to hit expand click now what I want to do is something a little bit different in here I'm gonna click it on in um, let's select actually I don't want to go in that much let's select all of the black so if I come on in here and I click this and I select this little area I could come up here and say select same fill color and what I could do right now is I could click up in here and maybe I'll go for like a really nice dark purple. I'll hit OK. And now I just changed a whole bunch of those colors. Not all of them, but some of them. Now, what I could do is I'm going to say, hmm, I want to change these red shoes. But I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all the colors with the same. So I'll come on up, select, same, fill color. Now, one thing that I have to be careful of Oh, and it didn't happen. I thought that it may have selected this one over here, but it didn't. Sometimes it will select your different objects too. So we're going to look at that one in a minute. So if I come up here, I say select, same, fill color. And now let's change this. Let's make these shoes. Let's see what color would be kind of cool. Let's go for... Let's go for something bright. Okay, so I changed these shoes. Now, let's come on in. Let's keep changing the color a little bit. Again, I need my, my white arrow, and I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to come on up here, select, same, fill color. Okay, and now what I could do is, you know, change this color too. You know, I could come on over to here. Again, select, same, fill color and maybe um, you know lighten the whole thing up just a little bit All right, so again the possibilities are endless I would also say yeah you know what I want to change this color select same fill color okay and we'll make this one doo -doo -doo -doo. Right blue okay there we go all right so let's actually place it one more time and I'm going to show you how when the problems are going to start to happen okay because I grouped this first shape then I have this shape now if I want to change the size of this I can just get this little guy right here this edit artboard and I can come on over when I hit the edit artboard I come up here and I can see that my width and my height change I have 10 inches by 8 inches so I come on over here make this kind of line up a little bit more to get out of this if I just hit my black arrow and there I have it. Now let's do let's do one more and let's see what happens. So I come to file again. I place I place my shoes in. Okay. Same type of thing. I want to make this the same size as the other one. So what I can do is come on up. Hold pull from the corner so you don't um, change the relationship of the width and the height. I can see that's about that. Now I come on in right to here. I click Live Trace, voila, I hit Expand, and again, there I have all of my points. I click off my black arrow, I come, I grab my white arrow, I'm going to zoom it on in, okay, I select this color right there, I come, select, same, fill color. Now, this is what happened now. Okay, what I can see is that when I did this, that time not only did it select mine 
down in the one that I'm working on, but it also selected the colors up in here. So how can I fix that? Well, I can do a couple different things. The first thing I could do is I could, well, this, this is how I'm going to do it. Are we ready? This is the way to do it. All right, so here I am in this one. If I take my layers, and let's actually take a look at the layers real quick. So this is layer one. Now, if I bullet this down, these are the groups underneath my layer. Okay, I can always tell which layer I have selected because there'll be a little box next to it. So if I click this one, and it's actually a, a sub layer in our layer. Okay, and if I click this one, I'm on this one. All right, so what I want to do is because I have this one all done, let me lock that one. Okay, because I have this one all done, let me lock this one. And I want to work on this one, so I'm going to be right here. So, but now look what happens, right? If I try to come on in here, and work on this layer well what should happen is you probably would get if you try to do like write with a pen tool or something actually what happens is sometimes you'll get this image with the pencil with the line through it and that's because you're trying to work on a layer that's not visible or um, you have a layer turned off and I know some people ran into that problem some people run into that problem quite a bit. All right, so I have these other groups locked. Now this won't affect it. Now I can come in, I can select, select, same, fill color. I'm going to change my color here. Let's go a little crazy. I'm going to do the same, select, same, fill color. Oh, bright yellow. Okay, we'll come again, select same fill color, double click. Okay, now I could come into here, select same fill color. Come on over into here, select same fill color. All right, so again, you know, we're just experimenting, trying new things, altering the colors. Uh, now, you could do a fourth one if you choose. What else you could do is you could stick with the, the three images. And again, just want to go over editing your artboard again. And you might think, hmm, I'd like to see these all one on top of another. So what I could do is I could just come on into here pull this down, come right to here, pull this over. Now if I wanted to move this piece, I would need to get out of my edit artboard, grab this, oops, and this is locked. That's why I'm having a hard time moving it. All right, so if I unlock it, I can pull this down right here, and I have my, my triptych, my triptych here. And this one's locked, so in order to move it, I need to unlock it, oops. And then maybe what I want to do next is end by putting a shape all around it um, by coming in, grabbing my shape tool, drawing something around it. I could come on in, object, arrange, send to back. There we have it. Maybe we could even change that color a little bit, make one that we haven't really had so far, something a little bit more like that. Then it stands out. And... Uh, I think that's it. Okay, so thanks for listening. Just to recap, um, Live Trace is a very easy way to take an image and turn it into a vector drawing. Now, once we run it through Live Trace, we have all kinds of options in Live Trace. Uh, but in order to get all these points, we need to always remember to hit expand. And there we have uh, a project that very easily and quickly works with the Live Trace. Now, Again, an important part of working in Live Trace 2 is working with your selection tool versus your direct select tool. So once we run our image through Live Trace, we can come and grab our white arrow and work with changing things around. So thanks for listening, and I'll end there.